everyone. Welcome back to the Book Marketing Tips and Author Success Podcast. And we're all in full on holiday mode. Uh, it is December 23rd. Um, super excited. We are here uh, to talk about uh, creating a new book marketing plan for the new year because it's like, you know, eight days away, or depending on when you're listening to this. Uh, Amy, welcome back to the show. So excited to be doing this particular episode, especially. I know, me too. We, we cover a lot of really good stuff here, so everybody needs to buckle in. <laughs> well, and and the, the, the reason that we want, so I know that, you know, it sounds sort of redundant. It's like, oh, okay, book marketing plan, we get it. That's not at all what this is about. This episode is really about creating a marketing plan that you can stick to And as well as we're going to talk a little bit about some of the pitfalls and and some of the things that we see consistently that prevent readers from, that prevent authors rather, from reaching readers and prevent them from from sticking to their plan. And I think that, you know, um, one of the one of the things that we that I hear a lot, especially when I talk to authors about their, their book, is maybe it'll work and let's try everything because I don't know what works. That has to stop because it creates a frantic, exhaustive pace that frankly, if you're running, you know, all the things at once with no consistency, you'll never know what one thing is working. And I'll give you an example. So I talked to an author the other day and she mentioned that she was getting on TikTok. And I said, why are you getting on TikTok? I don't really know. A lot of people are on TikTok. I feel like I have to be on there. And I think that, and I understand that, you know, you hear about TikTok and you think, oh my gosh, this is going to be great. And I'm so excited to get, um, you know, to, to try this out, or if you love doing video or whatever, but there's a difference between actually having a plan um, and trying something on a whim because you scan an author group and someone said that it, you know, that it works for them because stuff takes time to work, like planting a garden. You don't plant something one day and expect it to start growing the next. And I know we say that a lot, but I think it definitely bears repeating strategy, focus, and consistency are really the keys when it comes to setting your up, setting yourself up for success. And Amy, what's one of the first things that we recommend? Our free monthly book marketing planner. (laughs) That's probably not what you were expecting me to say, but it's honestly not just a shameless plug. It is a free download though, but it's a really important tool and it really fits into everything that we're saying here. So we're going to bring it up more than once, but we always recommend that you download or, you know, you can keep it on your computer or print it off, but do it a few months at a time. Yeah. Start filling things in because honestly, once you get started and you start adding in your ideas and these strategies that we're going to recommend and other strategies that perhaps are already working for you, you'll be surprised at how quickly the pieces start coming together. It's really just that first step of getting it laid out and starting to add things. Right. Exactly. Because it really is like a puzzle and it's daunting to get started. But once the pieces start to fall into place, Um, it's actually really motivating and it's a really productive way to start new habits. And before we start to give you strategy recommendations to add to your marketing plan, um, I want to suggest that we're not suggesting this fix for marketing requires hours and hours of effort every week. In fact, it's just the opposite because creating a plan in advance is really the key to spending less time on marketing with better returns. And that sounds appealing, I'm sure, to many of you. (laughs) Um, The traction you create with strategic planning is really quite priceless. And so I think the first thing that I want to speak to, and I know I'm probably going to mention this like a broken record throughout this episode, but is consistency. Consistency in absolutely everything you do. So I see authors a lot of times dip in and out of stuff, um, trying this and that, and never really giving anything a chance to work. And consistency is a big part of everything that we recommend. So this doesn't mean that you can't change things up. But by consistency, we mean always staying on track with something, right, Amy? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I always suggest, and, and 
for what it's worth, uh, I want everybody to know that we do a lot of coaching too, along with our big uh, marketing campaigns and things like that, because we, it's really important to us, at least to, for authors that are willing to, to receive it is to give them a lot of tools that they can use going forward and best practices and things like that, you know? So I always suggest that once a month, just take a look at your brand. I mean, check your website, your social accounts, your Goodreads, Author Central, your individual book pages on Amazon. Just a quick like 30 minute run through. We're not saying spend hours, but see if you can do one or two things to tie everything together even more. Or maybe it's updating the content across the board with something current, like an announcement about your next book, an upcoming holiday or seasonal tie-in that you have. Um, You know, that's like tying your book into a beach read or a Christmas present or something like that. But honestly, just 30 to 60 minutes a month with eyes on everything you have out there can dramatically improve the impact of your brand overall on readers. And I can't tell you how often when we're working with authors and I go check their website or I go check their author central, how they still are saying like my next book releases, whatever. And it's like six or seven months ago, that should not be happening. You know what I mean? So Part of this consistency, doing things better in the new year is spending just a little time to keep everything really tight and tied together. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I think that, you know, social media, so social media is always the thing that gets a lot of eye rolls, but planning is absolutely key here because we could spend a lot of time talking about social strategy. And I think we have dedicated a a couple of episodes, at least to um, social media, But your takeaway from this episode should be making your life easier. So choosing theme days, choosing things in advance, planning out theme days, theme content, monthly video releases, um, you know, quick help to resolve the dreaded, I don't know what to post today. You're sitting in front of your, you know, your Instagram or your Facebook because it's a problem that most authors have. And then you spend end up spending a lot of time and spinning your wheels trying to figure out what to post. Plus the added bonus of having, of choosing content in advance is it helps to start to create consistency. And as, as humans, obviously we gravitate towards consistency, but your readers will too. So they know what to expect, like on Thursday, throwback Thursday or theme day Fridays or whatever. Um, And lastly, don't be everywhere, be everywhere that matters. So if you have accounts on all the major platforms and you feel overwhelmed, do yourself a favor and cut the cord on the ones that you don't use or don't, or you feel um, that don't really resonate with your readers. And I know that this seems scary, but you'll thrive much more if your attention is focused and, um, you know, a tip for making the transition to start posting content on all the platforms you're going to stop using that sends people to where you want. So if you finally decide to ditch Facebook for Instagram, spend the next 30 days on Facebook, pushing followers to Instagram, and then commit, you know, to your final day. And you can also have like on all these platforms, like Twitter and wherever else, if you're thinking about leaving them, um, you can also pin a post there to say, follow me at, whatever on, you know, on Instagram. And the other thing that I want to mention too, and this is not necessarily related to updating your social media, but author support groups, which I really love, but I also want to encourage you to take them with a grain of salt because they can be a, they can be a rabbit hole. Um, And sometimes I see posts on there from authors asking, do Amazon ads really work? And then you'll see a lot of, a lot of responses without a lot of context. And You know, some of them will say, yes, they absolutely work because I sold 10,000 books on Amazon ads. But what this author isn't telling you is that he or she spent maybe $5,000 on the ads to sell those 10,000 books. Or you see an author saying Amazon ads are are a disaster. But what you don't know is that their book cover is bad. Their book page wasn't converting. Maybe they only used three keywords. So I think that groups can be really helpful. But don't feel, I mean, join one of them. Don't necessarily feel like you have to join all of them because first off, it's a lot to keep track of, but it can also send you down a a deep dive down a rabbit hole that will waste a lot of your time and time, frankly, that you're better spent, better spent on your marketing. Yeah, absolutely. And I can almost hear the collective size with this next one, (laughs) but add checking in on Goodreads to your planner as well, because 
at the end of the day, Goodreads is entirely focused on readers and authors and books. So it really is a captive audience. You know, at the end of the day, there's a lot of people on all the other platforms for thousands upon thousands of different reasons. And so it really is very challenging to just pick out, you know, the book lovers from those. But when you're on Goodreads, you have a captive audience. So even if you just spend an hour a month, you know, respond to messages, if you have them, post a comment or two in the genre groups, you know, rate or review a couple books. Hopefully you're reading. I know we all wish we had more time for reading, but, (laughs) you know, post a quick update on what you're doing, what you're up to announcements that you have going on for future books. Um, You know, in your footprint, will will organically grow and your exposure will organically grow and more readers will end up clicking over to your profile. They'll start checking out your books. It's just a really great way to introduce yourself to new genre fans by staying involved. And again, I emphasize, you know, this is an hour a month. This is not something that, you know, you have to do every day or even once a week, but just put it on your planner. So it's part of your commitment. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think that, you know, again, when you break it down like that and you think, oh, it's just an hour a month. I mean, you can absolutely make time for that. Um, The other piece of this is going to be pitching because I know that pitching feels like a big project for a lot of authors. But if you outline a few months at a time in your planner, it becomes so much more manageable. Plus, planning in advance also helps you to create clever angles for upcoming holidays, seasons. And on our blog, by the way, we do... um, uh, we, every month we have a list of, of the dates, the, um, uh, the holidays for that month and things like peanut butter and jelly day and all of that kind of fun stuff that you can, you know, potentially tether, you know, that you can potentially tie into. And we've done a lot of episodes on pitch, pitching. So definitely check those out for specific strategy ideas, pitching bloggers, media, things like that. But again, get your pitching schedule on your planner so that you're introducing yourself to three to four influencers a month and of course following up and thanking the ones that you that give you coverage along the way. Yeah, that's a really good point because you know we did a gratitude episode and I think mm-hmm. that's yeah. great to tie in is that you know once you get coverage that's amazing but add a follow up thank you to to that influencer that blogger that you know that contact at the media outlet whatever it is add that to your planner too, because it's awesome to have those wins on there as well. You know, the planner doesn't just have to remind you of homework that you have to do, but being able like a reminder that says, Oh, you need to make sure you think so-and-so it's like, Oh yeah, that's right. Because I had that great interview last month that I need to follow up on. I mean, those are, those are really positive ways to keep motivated too. And the next super simple one is BookBub. I love BookBub ads because they're inexpensive. The site is really intuitive. Uh, they've done, and, and this is nothing super new, but in the last year, the, the templates that they offer, they've given them a big overhaul. So they've gotten even better. And so you really don't have to even start with any sort of design experience anymore because now their templates are so well done that you just really kind of plug in all the things. Um, and the best way to incorporate bookmap ads on your planner is to use them in support of other work. Because a lot of times, you know, we've talked about that a lot before is, don't just throw something out there to the universe and cross your fingers. You know, you really should support what you're doing. So if you're doing a limited time price discount, run BookBub ads to support the fact that your book is on discount for a few days. You know, if you're releasing a new title in a series, run BookBub ads to announce that, you know, and even if nothing groundbreaking is happening for you in a particular month, BookBub ads are still a really great way to get in front of quite literally hundreds or even thousands of readers that are interested in your genre or topic. So it's also a really inexpensive way to just kind of keep your, your, your book cover and your name out there as well, because, you know, those kind of impressions still resonate, you know, they matter. So someone seeing your, your book cover on an email they get from BookBub might make a huge difference in whether they end up clicking by, you know, next week when they see your Amazon ad or something like that. So think about all those little touches that you can make and BookBub's really great for that. Yeah. Yeah. BookBub is really great. And it's, it's interesting. I'm always surprised at how many authors that I talk to that aren't familiar with BookBub and then go over there and think, oh my gosh, how did I miss this great resource? So it truly is such a great resource for authors. Um, the, the last must add to your planner is going to be education. There's actually three, um, education, market research, and fan gratitude. We did, as Amy mentioned, we did an episode on gratitude, which go back and listen to it. 
even though we did it for Thanksgiving, it's always appropriate. Um, but education is the first bullet that I want to talk about. So, so, so important. I am, I love learning. Like if I could spend my day learning, I would that is what I would do as much as I, I love, 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 love learning. I love going to writers conferences, but education doesn't have to be that complex. It can be something as simple as reading blogs, listening to podcasts like ours. Thank you so much for listening and attending, you know, some book marketing webinars hosted by individuals that have a strong track record. And obviously, you know, these are, you know, all of you listening to this and have, told us, told Amy and I that you've listened to all the episodes, you know how important education is. But I think a commitment to learning, signing up for writers conferences is a great idea. And now, you know, one of the good things that came out of 2020 is that a lot of these conferences also offer virtual tracks. So if you aren't really up for a flight, hotels, et cetera, you can always attend the conference in the comfort of your own home. But learning is an important part of your success because it gives you a chance to explore new ideas, gain some insight into things that you may not have considered. And this will help you as you start adding more knowledge to make smart choices about what you're going to do next. It keeps, helps to also keep you um, very current, right? And, and, and see what other, what other people are doing. Market research, I know that's a big term. It sounds scary, but what I really mean is, is take an hour each month to be a fan of your genre. Check the bestseller list, follow top authors or book influencers on social, see what they're up to and rate and review the, you know, review books. Just dedicate some time to stay on, staying on top of what's going on from a reader perspective. And this will also, all this stuff also helps to generate um, ideas. Fan gratitude, do one thing each month that's solely designed to reward your readers and fans. This will, this will help you to grow your fan base exponentially. You won't even believe how fast this happens. We did an entire episode of gratitude, as I mentioned, that dropped for Thanksgiving. Um, and I have a lot on our blog about creating bonus content. If you spend just a little bit of time going above and beyond for fans each month, you'll stand out from the crowd of other books and authors that are out there. And I just want to wrap this episode up by saying that creating a new book marketing plan is not always about chasing the next big thing. It's really about staying focused and creating um, you know, creating a plan, downloading the book marketing planner that Amy so uh, amazingly designed has been one of our most popular downloads, but planning out what you're going to do for book marketing and then staying focused on that and not getting too distracted by the next big shiny thing will turn the corner on your, uh, on your book promotion and your book success in 2022. I want to thank you so much for tuning into this episode. This is Penny Sansevieri and Amy Cornell. We want to wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And we will see you on with our mini-sode uh, on December 31st. Bye-bye.